Welcome to Servant of the Fates. I'm here to show you every deck in my possession, from Tarot, Oracle, and Lenormand to Sibylla and Kipper. I'll tell you which ones I recommend for which types of breeders. And let's begin. The first ones I'm going to show you are my core decks, the Rider Waits. This is the very first deck that I've had, the original Rider Waite Tarot deck. You can tell the itch from the box, especially the corners and this side here. But other than that, I try my best to care for the cards themselves. The back looks like this, perfectly reversible. And the cards themselves look like this. What's special about this edition of the Rider Waite is that the colors are more subtle compared to earlier versions. What is, for example, uh, bright blue in the other decks, it's this minty green here. So more subdued, gentler, and softer. And I heard that some people are complaining about the method of printing used in this deck. Uh, they don't like the crudeness of it, the rawness of it. Because, for example, if you look at the King of Pentacles, uh, his skin, right, his face, instead of being made up of one clean swoop of color, it's made up of tiny red dots instead. So some are saying that that's very crude, that's very primitive, but I actually find it very endearing because it reminds me of the printing method used for old newspapers, old comic books, and old magazines. So I find it all very nostalgic. Since this is a very old deck, the little white book that comes with it is also old. By that, I mean the meanings mentioned are old time tarot meanings. And it's always good to know these things to strengthen your arsenal. So that's very nice. I recommend this deck for anyone who reads through the Rider Waite and who wants a subtler, gentler, softer version of the deck. Next up is something that I've had with me for a while now as well, the Universal Weight Tarot deck. The box is your typical top box. And once more, the back is perfectly reversible for reversal readings. And what's very special about this deck is that it has been recolored. So all of the cards are just so much more vibrant and brighter than the other previous versions. This is what it looks like beside the original Rider Waite Tarot. So do you see the purple, the red, the colors are just really popping. Gorgeous. It did not come with a little white book. Instead, it came with a full copy of the Victorial Key to the Tarot by A.E. Waite. So again, old time tarot meanings that are very good to know. I recommend this deck to anyone who's only starting out with a tarot because in tarot the colors are very important so for example white and blue that's clarity spirituality intellectualism and then reds and oranges and yellows are about power and passion and manifestation so with this deck since the colors are just really popping and really there for you to look at it will be so much easier for you to learn and study the cards this is an enormous version of tarot aptly called the Giant Rider Waite Tarot Deck. The box is pretty durable for a talk box and the back, as always, is reversible. What I love about this deck is that tarot is read symbolically, right? And because the cards are so big, the symbols are so obvious, so it's so much easier to learn as well as to interpret them. This is what it looks like beside a normal tarot card, so it's really big. I recommend this deck to anyone who works with tarot when it comes to spell casting and meditation because the cards are so big so you can really look at them and connect to them. On the other end of the spectrum is a tiny version of tarot, the Smithwaite Centennial Edition. It comes in a tin, so it's very well protected. The card backings are very dainty. They look like this, and as usual, reversible. These cards, they have some sort of a vintage filter on them, making them look even older than they already are, so that's very cute. This is what the card looks like beside a normal tarot card and beside the giant one. So very small, very dainty. Very lovely. I recommend this deck to those of you who love to travel, as well as those of you who have small hands and small tables. The last of my core writer weights is the borderless edition of the Smithwaite Tarot. The box is just your 
usual talk box. And the back looks like this, beautiful dark green. As always, it's reversible. What they did with the cards is that they removed the borders and then extended the drawings a little bit. They're not even noticeable. But if we look at the Fool here, for example, versus the Fool from the original Rider Waite Tarot, you will notice that he has a couple more rays than him because they've been drawn and extended. And it's also a tiny bit wider than the other versions of the Rider Waite. I recommend this deck to those of you who hate borders. I know that a lot of you trim your decks. Well, this has been pre-trimmed for you. This next one is very glamorous, the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. So on the box, we see a preview of its Temperance card, and then on the other side, its Strength card. So now let's take a look at the cards themselves. The backs look like this, very gorgeous, and of course, reversible. And the cards, they are modernized, prettified, glamorized versions of the Rider Waite. So they're drawn very realistically. And of course, the gold adds a certain level of elegance and style to it. These are my favorite cards, the High Priestess, because look at her, girl can contour. <laughs> I also like the Emperor because he looks like Gandalf to me somehow. And I feel like the King of Wands is modeled after Elon Musk, so that's cool. <laughs> and then I just love how the two of them in the Two of Cups are looking at each other. I recommend this deck to anyone who wants to learn the Rider Waite symbolism, but also wants something that's a little bit modern and much prettier as well. Time for some fan fiction. This deck shows what supposedly happens a moment after the original scenarios in the Rider Waite. That's why it's called the After Terra. So look at the Two of Cups. Now they're embracing. What a nice idea. The box is like this. It's magnetic, huge, and sturdy. And the backs are like this. These are the most gorgeous backs I have ever seen. Reversible as well. And the cards themselves are like this. So see, now he's made his choice. And then, okay, so he's now being laid to rest. The Knight of Pentacles is now offering his pentacle up to someone. And my favorite cards are actually these ones. So the Fool, look at him. He's finally taking a leap. And the Three of Swords, how beautiful is that? The swords have been taken out and the heart has been bandaged and it's now ready to heal. Look at the book that it comes with. Very wonderful. You can learn a lot from this. It's colored and they have been divided this way. So the fives and then the sixes and it's just written wonderfully. There are a lot of traditional meanings that are mentioned as well as modern meanings. So it gives you a very good rounded learning. I recommend this deck to anyone who is curious about what supposedly happens next. This deck is based on The Little Prince, one of my most favorite books, The Tarot of the Little Prince. So normal talk box and then the backing looks like this. So it's not reversible, but it is quite beautiful. You have the little prince's planet here, and then you have his volcanoes, <laughs> and then his rose. So let's look at the cards themselves. The hermit, you have the astronomer, and then for the ten of wands, you have the scene of his death. Don't worry about this because the little white book that comes with it does explain all of these scenes, who these people are, and how they're related to the traditional meanings of tarot. So of course, I recommend this to anyone who also loves the book. You will find that it has a very gentle and soothing tone of voice that I'm sure you're going to appreciate. This is my Halloween deck, the Santa Muerte Tarot. So for those of you who don't know, Santa Muerte is a folk deity in Mexico, Our Lady of Holy Death. This deck is a tribute to her, the worship around her, as well as the atmosphere surrounding Dia de los Muertos or the Mexican holiday, Day of the Dead. If you've seen Pixar's Coco, then you know what I'm talking about. So it comes in this very beautiful and sturdy box and the backs look like this. Isn't that gorgeous? Of course, it's also reversible. And now let's take a look at the cards themselves. 
the fool you can see the heavy rider weight influence but at the same time it's also original and creative so that's really cool the magician in his candles the high priest is very strong and creepy and this is my favorite the empress and the emperor look at them they're like two of one right soulmates look at her dress this is wonderful i love this deck very much and then this is the book that comes with it its pages are colored so that's nice and um it's just very informative other than the meanings it also has advice of the dead for every card so that's really wonderful i recommend this deck to anyone like me who loves halloween dia de los muertos uh, all souls day you know the atmosphere related to this beautiful special occasion this deck is tarot meets retro the housewives tarot a domestic divination kit when you open it up, it looks like this. You have a little space there to put your name, but more importantly, it looks like a recipe book. And then it even has the dividers, the housewife's tarot, the major arcana, the minor arcana, and the instruction book. And guess what? All of them are actual recipes. So Madame Marlena's Mystical Martini, Divinated Eggs, and Icebox Fortune Cake. Very creative. So the cards look like this. The backs look like that, so like a picnic mat, right? And it's also matte, so very classy. And they're color-coded, so you have the major arcana, black borders, and then the wands are this yellowish, brownish, orange. And then the cups are blue, red for swords, and pentacles, green, right, for money. So that's very nice. What I love about this deck is that even though it's very fun and creative, look, they used dinnerware for pentacles and knives for swords. Even though it's really cool and creative, it still has a lot of depth, actually. I mean, it all looks fun, right? Smiling and just really gorgeous, wonderful, ironic images like the emperor. But you can ask this deck serious questions and you're going to get very respectful answers. So that's what I love about it. It's the best of both worlds. It has the depth as well as the fun aspect. So yeah, the chariot there, strength, scrubbo, soap, pass. <laughs> and then the hermit, I mean, this is what I mean. Look at the hermit, she's so pretty and she's taking a bath, but it does retain the meaning, right? The hermit is someone who's very comfortable being alone and who knows the idea of self-love, right? And spending some time to yourself and treating yourself to things. So that's what I mean. This deck is, <laughs> look at this, this is very cute. The hanged man, let's take a look at the other suits. So the swords, we already saw that this is really nice. The four of swords, the five of swords. So not just knives, but scissors as well. For cups, you have martini glasses. Oh, saucer and cups. And then for wands, uh, brooms as well as mops. She looks lovely. And then just the major arcana, like the magician, right? I mean, it all looks frivolous outwardly, but not really because the magician is someone who is very intelligent when it comes to manipulating people, <laughs> right? And just using his intelligence and his intellect and his words to get people to do what he wants. And that's what salespeople do, right? <laughs> They're very good at selling themselves and their products. So that's why I love this deck. That's why I'm obsessed with it because it's very sincere and fun at the same time. This is the book that comes with it. The pages are colored, so I like that very much. You have the images and it also has some spreads that you can use so very fun to work with and very informative i recommend this deck to anyone who is also into the retro look and feel as well as the madman atmosphere this is my art deck the golden botticelli tarot so you have goddess venus on the cover very beautiful and the backs look like this so they're quite elegant and of course reversible what they did with this deck is that they took images from sandro botticelli's artwork and they plastered them together to create these cards that are kind of a mirror 
of the Rider Waite. So the golden foil adds some level of elegance to it as usual. So that's really nice. I recommend this deck to those of you who like the Renaissance, of course, but also to those of you who have a Christian clientele, because there is a lot of Catholic imagery in this deck, so that should be something that they are familiar with. The last of my tarot decks is also the most ancient, the golden tarot, the Visconti Sforza deck. So the Visconti Sforza is the oldest surviving tarot deck in the world. It's from the 1400s. So it comes in this box, and when you open it up, you have the beautiful book, and then the deck itself comes in a smaller top box. Okay, so let's open it up. The back looks like this, so very elegant. And then the cards themselves look like this. So the High Priestess, she's the one on the cover. And then we have the King of Pentacles, and okay, so the two of swords looks like this, the five of wands looks like this, the two of cups looks like this. Why? Because before the Rider Waite came about in 1910, most of the decks were pip decks, okay? This means that only the major arcana and the court cards were illustrated. That's why it looks like this, right? The ace of pentacles. It's just a pentacle, you know, it's a coin. And then, you know, the five of cups is just five cups. But it's very old world and of course, very authentic so that's really nice it's very good to have a piece of tarot history with you let's take a look at the book it's really nice and i love reading this okay so at the very beginning it tells the history of tarot who the visconti forces are they are dukes of milan who commissioned this deck for themselves they wanted them as a playing card game that's how they would use it because before the fortune tellers of the time adapted tarot as a divination instrument that is what they were used for for playing so you have the history of tarot and then um you have images here right so beautiful the wedding of francesco sforza and bianca maria visconti so that's who they are and then you have the death card so all of them all of them are explained Wonderful, right? So I recommend this deck to those of you who would like to have a piece of tarot history with you and those of you who would like to learn what it's like to read with a pip deck. This was my very first oracle deck, The Wisdom of Avalon. It's inspired by the myth of Avalon and the Arthurian legend. It comes in your usual oracle card box with this guidebook and then the cards themselves look like this. So you have this kind of back, and the cards are people, messengers of Avalon, Merlin, the high priestess, and then of course the lady of the lake herself, the one on the box. After her are the animal guides of Avalon, eagle, swan, spider, dog, butterfly, and then after them there are sacred journey markers as well, so lots of keywords like that, the mystery, restriction, death, forgiveness, fear, risk, joy, communication. So it's a pretty comprehensive deck. It can give you a lot of good advice. The guidebook is just your typical oracle guidebook. The pages are not colored, but they do a good job of explaining the insights related to each card. I recommend this deck if, like me, you're into the Arthurian legend. I personally bought this after I watched BBC Merlin. I was like, I need to have something kind of Arthurian, you know? So there you go. I recommend this if you like this whole look and feel and that storyline and myth. This is my astrology deck, Clavis Astrologicae de Iris Sacra. It roughly translates to Astrological Keys of the Sacred Rainbow. It looks like a book. You open it up like this, and then the backs of the cards are fabulous. Okay, they look like that. Gilded edge is very pretty. And then the cards are the planets, so Pluto, the Sun, Luna, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, all of them through to the last. And then you have the zodiac signs, so Taurus, Cancer, Leo, Libra, Capricorn, and then after them are the houses. So the first house, 
Second house of value, fourth house, sixth house, through to the last. And then you have the faces of the moon as well as the eclipses, solar and lunar. So they're very cute to read with, <laughs> very dainty. And I recommend them to anyone who reads tarot as well as knows astrology. So it's really good to combine them together. My next deck has a very profound tone of voice. The Greek mythology reading cards. It comes in this very sturdy box that's a bit hard to open. And then you have the guidebook. The back of the cards looks like this. And I love the choice of goddesses, gods, and figures for this deck. So you have Aphrodite, Poseidon, Prometheus, Hermes, Uranus, Chiron, the Hydra, and I also love the keywords. So you have supremacy, goddess of light, messages, god of light, feelings, warmongering for Addis, relating for Hera, and the nature for Pegasus. So I just, I love the sincerity and authenticity of this deck. This is one of my more serious more um, profound oracle decks. The Grace is very pretty. This is the book that comes with it. It does a good job of explaining not only the meanings of the cards, but also the source for the images. So that's very nice. I recommend this deck not only to those of you who love Greek mythology, but also for people who are actual Greek or Roman pagans because of the sincerity and the authority of this deck. I have another Greek mythology deck, the Mythic Oracle. I honestly only bought this for Hades because I love the way he's depicted in the deck, but I couldn't bring myself to just put the rest of the deck in storage, so I am using it as well, even though I have a problem <laughs> with some of the cards. So the box is like this, very huge. And then this is the guidebook that comes with it. The backs of the cards look like that. And my problem is just, it's very subjective, you know? I don't like the way Apollo is depicted because I'm wondering why a god would have eye bags. <laughs> it's silly, but I don't know. These things matter to me. And then Aphrodite, I don't think she's beautiful enough. I mean, she's the goddess of beauty, but most of the women in this deck are prettier than her, so I couldn't accept that. <laughs> but I do like some of them, like Selene. And then Helios, as well as Eos are some of my favorite cards. So it's pretty nice. I mean, the tone of voice is very different from my other Greek mythology deck. This is much lighter, I would say. But it's also good. You know, my complaints about it are very subjective. So you could very well love it. This is Hephaestus. I love how he looks like, actually. One of the good cards from the deck. Hera is also gorgeous. Then you have Mnemosyne. So it has a very different retinue of gods and goddesses as well as heroes and other figures from my other Greek mythology deck. This is the book that it comes with, which is actually very nice. It does a very good job of explaining the myths and the messages as well. So there are separate sections in the book. I recommend this deck to anyone who likes this kind of art. You know, like I said, my complaints are very subjective and personal. I'm sure a lot of people are deeply in love with this deck. And if you like Greek mythology, then I recommend this deck to you. This is probably the most popular oracle deck in the world, especially now that it's out of print and selling for like $500 to $900 online. The Romans Angels Oracle Cards. It's about love and it's very pink and feminine. So the box is like that, your typical box. And then the guidebook, the back looks like this and the cards themselves are like this. So there's a headline, an imagery, and a subhead. This one says wedding. This situation involves marriage. Then you have finances and career. Pay attention to the red flags. Honeymoon. And then you have angels just, you know, scattered all over. Past life relationship. Deception. Soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate. Very nice. The guidebook that comes with this one is in Japanese because I got the version that's made for the Japanese market, but I also have a copy of the English one. Either way, it's very self-explanatory. 
So this is one of those decks where you don't really need to read the guidebook, though I would still recommend reading it for just, you know, additional insights. I recommend this deck to anyone who loves doing love readings because I honestly believe that this is the best love oracle out there. The most brutal oracle deck out there is Angel Answers. So it's all very ornate, the box. This is the guidebook that comes with it. And then the backs look like this and they are color coded. So the pink ones are like the advice and the prediction. The yellow ones are questions of timing and the purple ones are questions of yes, no, maybe. So you have cards like that, yes, no, unlikely, choose a new direction, yes with an exclamation point, no with an exclamation point, reconsider, there's something better. So I like the brutal frankness of this deck. Sometimes we all need that straightforward answers, right? So if you're asking about when, within the next few months, wait, you're ready, perfect timing, take action in the near future. And then the other cards are like this, so success, meditation, this will improve, helpful people, resolution, no need to worry. There is a guidebook that comes with it, though of course the meanings are very self-explanatory, that's why the explanations are so short, but it's still nice to read them for additional insights, right, as always. So I recommend this deck to anyone who wants straightforward, quick, and blunt answers. This is my moon deck, Queen of the Moon Oracle. The box is matte, very pretty, and then this is the guidebook and the back of the cards. The cards themselves are very beautiful, so they're um, digitally manipulated, and each card has an association with a phase or a type of moon, so a harvest moon, a hot moon, a beaver moon, and then waning gibbous, a waxing crescent, you know, things like that the dark moon, very beautiful. I love the feel, the look and feel of the imagery, as well as the messages that are contained within. All are beautifully explained in this guidebook. It's colored and I love the way that it's written. So I recommend this deck to anyone who works with the cycles of the moon. Next up is my animal deck. It's made by the same creator of the Queen of the Moon, so it has a similar atmosphere, the Divine Animals Oracle. So again, matte box, very sturdy, very pretty. And this is one of the best guidebooks ever. It's very thick. Now the cards, the backs are like that. And then they look like this. So very fantastical and ethereal. Stability for sea turtle, strategy for red fox, Look at that, hyena fear, and then protection for lioness. And on the cover of the deck of the box is the snow leopard, the watcher. So it's all very good to look at and the messages are very wise and profound as well. Now let's go to the book. I love the way it's been written because for every animal, look at the raven, you have the meaning, the meditation prediction meaning, divination meaning of the card, as well as the myth surrounding the animal and the scientific standing of the animal. Like, you know, facts about it. Is it okay? Is it endangered? What can it do? What are, you know, its characteristics and what makes it unique and all that. So I love how it's very well researched. I feel like it's very respectful of the animals and I recommend this deck to anyone who believes in the wisdom and the sanctity of our animal friends. If Santa Muerte is my Halloween tarot, this is my Halloween oracle, the witch's wisdom. So the box is pretty in purple, and this is the guidebook. The backs look like that, very classy. And what else is classy? The silver edges, beautiful, very unique. And the cards depict objects that are associated with Western witchcraft. So like cauldron, familiar, tarot cards, witch's cottage, very pretty, hex, witch's hat, candles, cloak, fire, you know, these kinds of objects and elements. The book does a pretty good job of explaining what these items mean to the kinds of witches who follow 
uh, this kind of path. So I recommend this deck to anyone who also enjoys Halloween like me and to those who like The Worst Witch on Netflix because <laughs> that is honestly what this deck reminds me of. Shows like that. Uh, not so much Harry Potter, but yeah. The Worst Witch is, I think, very reminiscent <laughs> of this deck, of the tone of voice of this deck. Witch's Wisdom has a sister deck, the Witch's Kitchen. I love the green, very Maleficent. So the box is very similar to Witch's Wisdom. Uh, this is the guidebook and the backs are lovely. Aren't they cute? Instead of silver, this deck has golden etchings. And the cards are herbs, plants, and sometimes flowers, but mostly herbs that are used by witches for healing and protection. I love the look and feel. It's also pretty Halloween-y, kind of um, witch's cottage meets haunted mansion, kind of. So I like that coriander immortality. So there's always a keyword association with a prediction or meditation aspect of the card. So that's very nice, Apple Forbidden. The book that comes with it does a good job of explaining all of them. So there's a message, the guidance, and then there's also a recipe and an explanation of why this herb or that has magical properties. I recommend this deck to anyone who wants to learn what it's like to be a kitchen witch and who wants to start working with herbs for healing as well as protection. Let's go from herbs to flowers. The Botanical Inspirations deck. The box opens up this way, and then you have the guidebook, as well as the leaflet that says the secret language of flowers, and you have the cards themselves. So the back says the deck's name, Botanical Inspirations, and then these are just the most beautiful images of flowers ever. Wouldn't you agree? Look at that. Very, very pretty. So it says the names and then there's a keyword dignity and a quote associated with it. So a wise man has dignity without pride. A fool has pride without dignity by Confucius. So it's all like that. Very wise, very profound, very deep and very beautiful. So let's take a look at this leaflet. These are like um, very short keywords for each flower. So it's complete for Camellia, it's destiny, for White Rose, it's new start and wisdom. And then you have the book to further explain all of that. So you have the image again, the names, the symbolism, and an inspirational message. I recommend this to anyone who loves quotes as well as motivational um, imagery and just really, really nice um, meditative look and feel and atmosphere. This is my most old-fashioned oracle deck archetype cards. The box is so big because it has over 70 cards compared to your usual 40 plus with the other oracle decks. So that's the guidebook and the backs are pretty nice, pretty elegant and fashionable, but the cards themselves I wouldn't call pretty. They're so again old-fashioned <laughs> And I think they're a bit basic, the design. Still, they're very substantial. So these are psychological archetypes that some of us, all of us fall in one way or another. So you have uh, things like teacher, athlete, prince, dilettante, companion, exorcist, femme fatale, liberator, mother, and so many others. And then for all of this, there's a light attribute as well as a shadow attribute. So for example, for the Virgin, light is maintaining symbolic purity of heart and spirit, but shadow is fear of intimate union. So it's like that for all of them. Uh, they're actually very informative and I feel like they're just very substantial and very wise and they can answer a lot of questions. So the deck comes with this book and uh, it's very nice because it explains the cards even more than the words that are appearing on them. So it's like a further insights into what each archetype is all about. I recommend this deck for those of you who love to ask questions about people. So like, who will I marry? Um, is this person someone that I can trust? Who is my soulmate? 
is this friend of mine loyal to me you know something like that because this is a great deck for describing people who they truly are inside i'm an avid traveler so i was very attracted to the concept of this deck the sacred traveler oracle cards so the box is a matte purple as well as the guidebook and the cards themselves so everything's matte and purple and pretty quite ethereal and enchanting the design of the backing the cards are like this soft gentle colorful overcoming obstacles in the flow so they all have this beautiful imagery and then a headline and a quote further explaining that so finding sanctuary is opening to your spiritual source very nice i love the type of art the style that is used in this deck surrendering to the journey this is the one on the cover of the box transformation a fresh new way of living emerges so basically what this deck does is it uses the metaphor of traveling as um a reflection on life's journey so ascending the mountain it's about when you have problems keep moving forward and then rainbow blessings are showering in your life healing rejuvenating fellow travelers are there as well and sometimes you know you have to tread thoughtfully and carefully when there's a narrow pathway this is the guidebook that comes with it it's quite a nice read it's uh, very soft and gentle the tone of voice just like the deck and i recommend this deck for anyone who loves to meditate because this is really good for that as well as for those of you who love to travel as well i loved fairy tales as a kid even now that is why i knew i had to get this the fairy godmother oracle cards i love the black and the purple with the gold very classy so this is the guidebook and then the backing of the cards looks like that golden star and golden as well are the edges so gilded edges very pretty and the cards look like this so they have this very ornate intricate border and look at the art i love it there is something very fairy like indeed about the style of distortion used by the artist so i'm very happy with this deck i think it's very enchanting and magical and fascinating so the keywords are like that encouragement perception guilt so it's not very frivolous there are negative words as well so it's really good for reflection discernment divine love identity and romance of course the guidebook is um it looks like this it's okay it's quite nice i mean the cards are self-explanatory so um, they really don't do a lot but of course i still read all of the guidebooks because there are always additional insights that can help you know this way or that one way or another so i recommend this deck to anyone who likes this kind of art i really like it you know very um very whimsical and indeed magical and fairy like and of course if you love fairy tales then definitely get this deck this is an oracle deck as well as a spell book the enchanted spell oracle so it comes in this beautiful cream and blue box that's the guidebook and look at the backs lovely so the cards themselves are like this fertility intuition yes it does feature the celtic astrology as well as the trees associated with it so you have the dates as well so it's all complete happiness healing love very beautiful cards the art i feel like it's somehow inspired by medieval imagery so it's just all very colorful and very profound and vibrant let's look at the guidebook so like i said it's a guidebook as well as a spell book so it explains the symbolism of the cards what it means for divination as well as some rituals some very simple short and sweet rituals that you can do to invite abundance beauty happiness and so many other good things in your life i recommend this deck to anyone who wants to start spell casting this will be a good introduction as well as to someone who wants to learn about celtic astrology because this would be a nice intro to that as well we end my oracle collection with the fairy forest 
I love how ethereal the cover is. I love the green of it, very enchanting. So it's a pretty huge box because the guidebook is big as well. And so are the cards themselves. So the back looks like that enchanted forest, right? Very inviting. And look how hypnotic and mesmerizing these fairies are. So, especially this one, look so, so beautiful. Look at them, she's my favorite. Before the Gathering, Astrid, Duira, Aisling, Sorceress, they are all just breathtaking. She who laughs. I love this deck because of the beauty of it, as well as the deft, of course, of the messages. So like this one, Elven Touch, Recovery, Comeback, Revival. It's a very good message and prediction to receive if you do draw this card. So let's look at the guidebook. I love the paper stock used. It's not your typical bond paper kind of level. So it's closer to um, like novels and fiction books. It's really nice to touch and they look like this. So every page is a different card explained. And then there are a lot of spreads. So you have the cycles of the moon, the fairy forest tree spread. You have the Celtic cross and just your simple three card spread. So I recommend this deck to anyone who loves fairies, who works with the fae, and who likes, you know, just this kind of beautiful imagery, very feminine and very mesmerizing. Let's begin the Lenormand Parade with a true classic. This deck was first published in 1920. It's the Blaue Eule or the Blue Owl Lenormand. So it comes in this very humble minty green talk box. And this is what the back of the cards look like. There's a blue owl on them, hence the name. And the cards themselves look like this. So very simple. A house is a house. A scythe is a scythe. A fox is a fox. Fish, the cross, and the bear. All of the images are very clear, not cluttered at all. It's so easy to read with them and so easy to learn with them. That is why I recommend this deck to beginners because it's always nice to start with a deck that's just clean and simple. And I also recommend it to anyone who just wants to have a traditional deck because this is one of the earliest. And if you're a Lenormand reader, then it would be nice for you to have something with a bit of history with it. This deck is a giant version of the Blue Owl, the Golden Lenormand Oracle. So it comes in this very beautiful vintage red and gold box that's also sturdy and durable. There's a guidebook and the back is lovely. Look, it's an angel surrounded by doves in this blue-green beautiful background. So the cards themselves, like I said, they are like the Blue Owl but much bigger and there's gold foil on them. So you have the cross, the heart, the bear, the man, and the size comparison is like this. So really large, really huge compared to your typical Lenormand deck. Let's take a look at the guidebook. Simple, you know, very simple, um, like three-fourths of a page for each card. So, you know, just your um, usual word associations as well as pairing examples. So that can be useful as well. I recommend this deck to anyone who wants to have a huge Lenormand deck for once. It won't be so useful for grant to blows, but for the smaller spreads, it's going to be perfect. Another traditional looking deck that actually just came out last year is the old style Lenormand. So this is what the back looks like. It just says the name of the cards. And then these are the cards. Very beautiful child, fox, lilies, clouds, house. Don't you just love this style? Very nostalgic, right? This is the man, snake, that's cute. And then the mountain, the mice, and the lady. So I also love the guidebook that comes with it. It's very informative. So for example, the scythe, it has the keywords and then an explanation and what it means in a people spread, in a relationship spread, in a work spread, and in a well-being spread. So that's good to know. I recommend this deck for beginners because the cards are not cluttered at all. They're very clear. It will be very easy for you to learn with. And like I said, the guidebook is also fantastic. Tarot meets Lenormand in Pixie's Astounding Lenormand. Pixie is Pamela Coleman Smith, the woman who painted the Rider Waite deck cards. So it comes in this beautiful tin box, very durable. 
and it comes with this beautiful guidebook as well and look at the back isn't that lovely it's very cute it's very dainty and just really really cool so what they did with this deck is that they took artwork from pixie's tarot and non-tarot drawings and they put them together to create the symbols of lenormand so this sun for example is the sun from the sun card in the rider weight and then the coffin this is the background of the ten of swords so it's always like that they always take something from pixie and put them here so it's really nice to see the symbols that tarot readers are already familiar with placed in a lenormand deck this is the guidebook it does a good job of explaining the image origins that's what i love about it because the others are just you know simple simple guidelines and meanings but it's really the image origins that are very fun to read so i recommend this deck to anyone who wants to learn lenormand who's already a tarot reader because it's going to be very familiar and it won't be intimidating at all you're gonna have you know this feeling of being at home while learning lenormand if you already know the rider weight this is a very modern lenormand deck the seventh spear so i like the color theme the color palette it comes in this beautiful white magnetic box and look at the back they're rose gold and white isn't that just elegant and stylish and gorgeous so the cards they are made of plastic that's what makes them luxurious and different and they're all vector based so digital imagery look at the man and the woman facing each other lovely the child the clover so it's a very subdued color palette and um it's just nice to look at and also easy to read with because the images are not cluttered so there is a free app that comes with this and it's very good at teaching you the card meanings i recommend this deck to anyone who wants to have a premium lenormand deck this is a sister deck to seven sphere they have the same creator the golden thread lenormand so it also comes in a magnetic box and the back is very classy as are the cards because black and gold have always been a very elegant combination so you have the tower dog mice tree everything is beautiful and also the cards are made of plastic i recommend this deck to anyone who's already well versed in lenormand because the cards can be quite cluttered so it's not very nice starter deck for beginners but if you already know how to read with lenormand then this is very nice to have in your collection speaking of cluttered say hello to the fairy tale lenormand look how beautiful it is there's even a keyhole on this side of the tin so that's very lovely and then this is the guidebook that comes with it and look at the back beautiful absolutely wonderful the cards though look like this so the bear instead of just a bear there are two girls with it and then the scythe look at the scythe there's also a house that's even more prominent than the scythe and there's a separate house card in lenormand that's why it's a bit confusing it can be if you're a beginner in lenormand but if you're not then you're gonna love the creativity because there's an associated fairy tale for every card and that is what the guidebook is good for it explains what it's about where the cards were taken the imagery for the cards and what fairy tale is associated with it there are also some keywords so that's good to know I do not recommend this deck for beginners, but if you already know how to read with Lenormand, then this is very, very nice to have and to add to your collection. The last of my Lenormand decks is also the cutest, Dreaming Way Lenormand. Look how magical and dreamy the box is. So it comes with this guidebook. It's very cute. It's like a notebook, <laughs> the way it's bound. And this is the back, very whimsical. The cards look like this. These are my favorite ones. The ship is on a water basin. How cute is that? And then there's a door on the book. And then look at the clouds card. They are steam. The clouds are steam from coffee. And then the fish. The fish are wearing an umbrella and it's raining inside. And then the coffin is like this. It's a tin can. So it's just all very whimsical and very dreamlike right 
So that's nice. This is a very vibrant and colorful deck to have. This is one of the cutest ever guidebooks because the copy, the text is so short. You can read this in like 10 minutes or 12 minutes because it's just very short and sweet and it's a fun read. So I recommend this deck to anyone who likes color and who likes modern decks. The first of my two Sipila decks is the Gypsy Oracle cards. What this deck basically is an English version of Sipila. So the back looks like this, very old fashioned. And then the cards themselves are like this. So you have prison, you have the English word, and then you have four other languages. And I love the style of the cards, the imagery. I like the era that they're taken from. I love the color palette and it feels like there's this sort of um, vintage filter on top of the card. So I really admire that too because it gives some sort of depth to the readings. It gives it some sort of um, profoundness and sincerity because of the old nostalgic feel of them. I recommend this deck to anyone who wants to learn Sibila who doesn't know how to speak Italian. This would be a great starter deck for you. My other Sibila is the Vera Sibila Italiana, also known as Everyday Oracle. So it's a sister deck to Gypsy Oracle cards. They even have a very similar look and feel and the images are mirrored as well. Almost the same poses, but a different color palette. This is more reds and blues and the era is quite different. But other than that, you can really recognize the images because they are like echoes of each other. What's good about this deck is that it includes the traditional lottery numbers that are associated with the Sibila cards. So I recommend this to you if you want to expand your Sibila collection because it's quite hard outside of Italy to find the best, the traditional decks, and this one is widely available to anyone. The first of my two Kipper decks is the Fondesia Kipper by Ciro Marchetti. This deck is very popular because it's among the first English Kipper decks in the market. The box is beautiful. It's green and it's silver, very Slytherin, and it's magnetic. It comes with this guidebook and the back of the cards looks like this. Isn't that mesmerizing? Isn't that wonderful? What I love about these cards is the look and feel reminds me so much of one of my favorite movies, Clue from 1985, based on the board game Clue, aka Cluedo. I just feel like they have the same haunted mansion meets old Hollywood atmosphere, especially this card, right? So it's, uh, it's very similar. It reminds me so much of that movie. That's why I am very much in love with this deck. Kipper is closer to Lenormand when it comes to the structure, but the cards themselves, I would say uh, they're closer to Sibila when it comes to the context of the cards. So if you already know how to read with Lenormand and Sibila, then learning Kipper should be easy for you. The last of my Kippers and the last of my decks is something that only came out this month. It's the Kipper Oracle Cards by Alexandre Musruk. And I just love it so much because it has this very old world feel to it. So look at the back of the cards. It's like um, curtains or carpets from a Victorian house. So I like that very much. And the sides, the edges are gilded, but it's not your typical super shiny edging. It's kind of semi-matte. I would describe it as that. So I like that very much. And then the cards look I love the burned effect, the sort of filter that makes it look even older. So this is the good Lord. This is marriage. I love the pop of the blue and the red in their clothes. And look, it's just a really beautiful deck. Very Parisian, very French, because this guy, Alexandre Moussrouk, he is from Paris, I believe. He's French. So he always adds a touch of France to anything he makes. And look at this. It is just really wonderful. I was so excited to get this deck and it just really doesn't disappoint because the cards are beautiful. The cardstock is also very thick. So this is something that's new in the market. And if you're learning Kipper, then I definitely recommend this thing of beauty. I also got his book. This was sold separately. I haven't read it yet because I haven't had the time, frankly, but I'm so excited to learn more about Kipper through this book. 
It has 286 pages. So there's a journal at the back and a lot of text. Very nice explaining the meanings of the cards. So that's it. Those are every deck in my possession. I hope you decide to get some of them for yourself. Thank you for joining me today and I wish you all the best in your own cardamency journey. Take care.